Brandon Parks with Morpheus Data. I run product here at Morpheus, and one of the things we're going to talk about today is what is cloud computing? So to help, I have brought star of the show, Dublin. I admit, she's my daughter. I'm very proud of her. She's very smart. But we're just going to have a little chat around what is a cloud. So Dublin, what's a cloud? Um, first, I think it's the thing in the sky. Come on. Technical, what's cloud computing? I know you know I, a little bit. I think it is um, where all the data and apps go in your computer. Your phone, phone. all that stuff. All right. Um, so as a parent, I know you spent a lot of time playing video games, much to my chagrin. When you go and you need to get a new mod for Minecraft, who do you, who do you call for that? Nobody. No? Where do you go? How do you get it? I go to the marketplace and I just click a button and it takes no time at all to okay. just install. You don't have to wait like a week to... It just happens. All right. Ten seconds or less. We've just gotten a long way through what is a cloud. So go build something cool in Minecraft. I got it from here. All right. Trying to prove a little bit of a point because she's from a much smarter generation than you or me. When we talk about what is a cloud, though, this is a conversation I have with a lot of, not just customers, but salespeople at partners, at OEMs, other folks we work with. So I wanted to spend a minute just kind of deconstructing the classic NIST definition of cloud computing and talk about some of the misconceptions that I see when I'm out talking to customers. So first, one of the things that, that often comes up, I'll be at a, a VMworld event or talking to a customer somewhere and I'll say, hey, what? What is your cloud computing strategy? Sometimes they say, well, we're all on-premises. We're not in cloud, which tells me maybe they, they haven't thought about turning their on-prem environment into cloud. Uh, one of the other things sometimes comes up is they'll say, oh, we're, uh, we use VxRail or SimpliVity or Nutanix, some sort of hyper-converged technology. I'll say, great, that's it's interesting. It's not a cloud, it's, it's a great way to wire up your compute and your storage and your networking very, very quickly. Still not a cloud. Um, other times, I'll say I'm using VMware Cloud Foundation or some other software stack. I'll say, well, again, same thing. The proof is in the name, right? VMware Cloud Foundation is a good foundational set of technologies for a cloud. It includes your vSphere, your NSX, your core attributes of the VMware stack. Still not a cloud. And here's the one that always sometimes gets folks that we talk to, because there are a lot of providers now offering elastic and metered-based infrastructure, right? Still not a cloud. So let's kind of deconstruct and talk about what makes a cloud a cloud, right? And there are five key attributes that define cloud computing when you look at the, the knowledge around what NIST, or uh, the National Institute of Standards, originally canonized as cloud computing back in. 2011. So um, a couple of those attributes are met by technology offerings like uh, HPE GreenLake or Dell Apex or Lenovo TrueScale, these other on-premises approaches to elastic uh, infrastructure. So a couple of the things that they have in mind. So metered is one of the key attributes of cloud computing, right? You only pay for what you use. Another thing is it's elastic, right? Meaning you don't care if you're running out of space or not. It, it'll grow and shrink. It's fungible. It's pooled, right? Meaning your resources are often co-located alongside other resources. You don't really care where your application's getting provisioned, right? Um, you're also accessing it over a network, right? You're going into a web browser. You're accessing your... Uh, your resource. Now, the last piece where a lot of some of those offerings fall short is what Dublin was talking to me about. When she needed a, a new mod for Minecraft, or if you're an internal developer and you need a new application, what's missing from this list, right? The fifth attribute, and one of the most important ones, is self-service. And really, it's what drove a lot of the adoption of public cloud computing in the first place. You had development teams, product groups inside big enterprises who were tired of waiting for days or weeks for internal IT to deliver the application stacks that they requested. So people like Amazon or Heroku in the early days figured this out 
and they provided offerings which let these development teams go to a self-service portal, run an API command, or hit a button, and get their VM, their database, their application stack deployed on demand in a self-service way without having to wait. So self-service is the fifth and from a Morpheus perspective, one of the most important attributes of cloud computing, right? Uh, why is it important to us? Because it's what we provide. Morpheus is an application stack. It's a framework, a platform that lets enterprises as well as OEMs and service providers create these hybrid cloud environments. We connect to your on-premises hypervisors, your networking tools, your ITSM tools, your other tooling to create a true private cloud. And we also wrap governance policy around how internal users access public cloud resources. But the key for us is we are that self-service portal. You go into the Morpheus UI or our Terraform provider or our API CLI, and as a developer, you get what you need on demand without waiting. All of these other capabilities, while great, and are what are offered by things like GreenLake, like TrueScale, like Apex, like the other infrastructure-based offerings, without self-service, you haven't truly reached that cloud nirvana. That's why we partner with companies like Lenovo, like Dell, like HPE, to provide true hybrid cloud. So hopefully that was useful. Um, have a great day. Let us know if we can help.